Welcome. You are attending a webinar presented by Project Works and Work Guru. Today, our panel is discussing the topic, There's Life Beyond Workflow Max by Zero: End of Life Alternatives. I'm your, I'm Heather Smith and I'm your host for today. Um, during the session, we encourage you to chat in the chat area like you have been doing and ask any questions that you may have in the Q&A area. And we have a lot of experts monitoring um, both areas. So I'm going to pop the agenda on the screen. Let's see if I can figure this bit out. Yes. There's the agenda. Um, I'm going to pop the agenda on the screen. And um, as you are looking at that, let me just run through a few of the learning outcomes for today. Um, we're going to learn about the product features, capabilities, and differences between Project Works and Work Guru. We're going to understand preparation, timeliness, um, timelines, and processes involved in migrating data and business processes away from Workflow Max by Zero. We're going to hear about client transitions from Workflow Max by Zero through case studies that highlight both the challenges and the opportunities. With that, I'd like to briefly introduce myself. So my name is Heather Smith. I'm a chartered accountant, certified bookkeeper and writer, and I'm very focused on the accounting app space. I strategically partner with a number of solutions, including both Project Works and Work Gurus. Um, so today I'm your host, the controller of the slides, and I also have the bell. I'm the <laughs> controller of the bell if we need it. <laughs> um, so now I'd like to welcome my fellow panelists, panelists who have kindly joined us today, and you can see them here. Now, in the order of the slide, can you share who you are, where you're from, and what you're bringing to today's session today? So let's start with you, Heidi, if that's okay. Cool. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Heidi Seal. I'm an operations consultant from Tauranga, New Zealand, and my consulting practice is called Business Sense. Uh, we serve businesses nationwide in New Zealand and a handful across the mighty land of Australia too. And today I'm bringing 15 years of experience from the accounting and software implementation space, uh, a real life dose of workflow mix changeover insights from the past 12 months, and um, also some enthusiasm because this is a topic that I love. Fabulous. Matthew, Matt Peng, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Matthew Pang, founder of Business Continuum, uh, operating for about 10 years now, servicing uh, clients primarily in Australia. Uh, we are in the professional services space, helping accounting firms largely, but also a range of other sectors uh, consider uh, applications uh, to run, run their projects um, using a range of solutions uh, in market that, that are within, the, say, the Zero ecosystem. Um, and here today sort of to share my experience on working with uh, the likes of WorkGuru and, and, and ProjectWorks. Great. Fabulous. Hey all, uh, I'm Matt Hader, uh, based here in Wellington, New Zealand. Um, I'm a co-founder and was formerly CEO at ProjectWorks. More recently though, I've stepped into the role of Chief Product Officer. Uh, and I'm here today to really touch on some of the Project Works features that may be new to people coming from Workflow Max, uh, and also maybe differ slightly to what the team at WorkGuru have. Um, and big thanks to Tony for inviting uh, me along today. Um, and I'll also be happy to answer any Project Works specific questions that anyone may have. Thank you. Fabulous. Thanks, Matt. Hi all, I'm, I'm Tony Harcourt. I'm one of the founders here at WorkGuru. Um, hopefully I bring an understanding of the differences between Workflow Max and WorkGuru. Uh, and prior to that, I've also got about a decade of experience implementing Workflow Max by zero, which is kind of where the genesis for WorkGuru came from. So uh, keen to understand people's migration issues, problems and questions, and hopefully I can bring some experience to that as well. Thank you so much. So let's move to the first session, understanding the transition. And if I can um, hand across to you, Heidi, um, to talk about the triggers for change. Yeah, sure. So uh, last year in March, we were advised by Workflow Max by Zero that Workflow Max would be retired in June 2024. So it's not new news, but um, time certainly flies. So since then, Blue Rock have been building an entirely new software platform to replace Workflow Max. Um, they bought the brand name, but did not inherit the code or the product um, or the platform. And so they've been busy building, um, some may call it uh, Workflow Max by Blue Rock, some call it Workflow Max 2, and the future will be known as Workflow Max. Um, so on the 26th of June, Workflow Max as we know it uh, will be turned off, um, the data will be gone, there won't be a read-only access, it will 
it will not exist. And so um, the trigger for change is that if you're using Workflow Max, um, you need to find an alternative. Um, it's mandatory that change is made uh, for all that are relying on this platform for their business. Thank you very much there, Heidi. Now, I'm not sure if you've got anything else to add there, Matthew Pang, or we'll go straight to the um, what the market reaction. Yeah, happy to sort of speak to this slide. Uh, that's right. So the confusion around Work for Max by, by Blue Rock, I guess, is really just around uh, ownership. Uh, so Work for Max by Blue, Blue Rock is effectively uh, av available now. Uh, it, I guess the confusion or, or, or something for consideration for uh, the audience and, and clients of our audience today is that uh, it is not a natural migration to work for Max by, by Blue Rock. You will have to opt in. So just be aware as you're speaking to clients around um, the, the, the opportunity to move to work for Max by Blue Rock, that it, you must opt in. You must enact a uh, migration because um, come the end of uh, June or June 26th, uh, you, you will ne have needed to have uh, at least perform that final migration by then. Otherwise your, your data will, will effectively be uh, inaccessible. Uh, so this really gives us uh, an opportunity today to sort of explore other solutions in markets. And we'll sort of talk about the industries that uh, both Work Guru and Project Works uh, serve but you'll you'll want to investigate you know beyond what what you've perhaps used for one or more years with work for max uh by zero some of the other options that uh, can enhance or you know complement your existing workflow now that now that you're perhaps in a position where you're looking for options uh so yeah really good, good time right now and really the at this particular juncture um, probably one of the later points in time of of the uh, the transition to really consider before it gets becomes too late. Thank you, thank you for that. Let's um, anything else that anyone wants to say for that bit. Otherwise, I'll move to the next slide. I think we're good. Okay. So the solution. So we have here our comparative table. Can I hand across to you, Tony, for this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so probably the, the big difference is, guys, is is obviously between you know, Workflow Max by Blue Rock and, and both Project Works and Work Guru. Um, but but Project Works and Work Guru both have a fair bit in common. So um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we do together, but we've both got a very similar shared history. Uh, Matt Hader and I both come out of consulting backgrounds, which is which is where both Project Works and Work Guru came from. Uh, but we, one of the some of the things that we've put on this comparative slide is just so you can see some of our history. And probably the the key things that people want to know is how long you've been around, uh, because you know people always want to know that for software solutions. Who do you service? Um, you know, so for the projects work guys, huge focus on the professional services and consulting for us, more engineering, construction, fabrication kind of things. Um, and, and what's your pricing? Those those tend to be the three key questions that we get asked. So we thought we'd put that up front in a, in a comparative table between the two of us. Fantastic. So now to the common features. 100%. So like I said, we've got a lot of things in common uh, coming out of both of our consulting backgrounds. So you won't find us fighting over the things that we both do well. Uh, so both Project Works and Work Guru have extensive functionality around project management, invoicing, quoting, um, multi-currency support and, and multi-location tax support. So really uh, important for if you've got different jurisdictions for VAT or GST. Uh, I know some UK partners were sitting in on this and you know, keen to know that uh, we both had VAT support. Yes, we do. Um, we both have you know, lead management capability, custom fields, reporting, and, and work in progress, all key things that project management software need, as well as customizable dashboards. And the key thing is that we're ready now, we're tested, we're trusted, and we're supported worldwide. So, you know, huge amount of stuff that we do have in common, um, and, and both both platforms are, you know, service different areas, I suppose, of the project or job management space. Thank you. Matt, is there anything else that you'd like to add there? And, and, and I do want to highlight the custom fields, they're advanced and they are slightly different, aren't they, across the features? Yeah, I think Tony's covered that really well. And I think the key kind of message there is we've both come from consulting, we both kind of know this industry. Um, and while, uh, while where our products have landed, and we'll talk to that in a minute, has kind of varied slightly, um, 
really this core is, is quite similar. Um, and we both do custom fields. There's an asterisk there because um, the way that we've implemented those is slightly different. I think Tony's going to talk a bit more around the specifics of uh, the work guru way of, of tackling those uh, shortly. Thank you. Target industries. Back to you, Matt Hater. Yeah, so like Tony said, we both kind of spun out of consultancies. Um, Project Works spun out of a software consultancy, and we've really found our stride kind of within these four industries. So software consultants, other software consultants, um, makes up a big portion of our customer base. Um, also kind of the more general management consulting side, which in incorporates a whole kind of raft of more niche verticals, I guess you'd call them. Um, that engineering consultancy and architecture firm side, it's really for us, it's sort of project-based organizations that rely heavily on recording time and billing hours to their customers. Thank you. Anything there you'd want to um, talk about, Tony? Yeah, cool. Um, it's very similar. For us, it's the, the things that made us go and build WorkGuru were, were functionalities that we used to have to deny to clients. So that fabrication and construction specifically kind of space. So fabrication was always stock control uh, and purchasing with their project management. So timesheets, stock control, purchasing, and all of the invoices for that. Uh, and construction, specifically things like variations, retentions, uh, progress claims, all the kind of things that you know, as you get a bit bigger, the you know, construction industry or fabrication industry, spreadsheets just don't cut that anymore. So that's why we built those kind of key things in for us. Uh, and that's probably, you know, one of our major points of difference. Excellent. So back to you, Matt. Um, we can sort of deep dive into um, points of difference for project works here. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Um, <clears throat> so I guess one of the key sort of points of difference for us is we've got a lot of focus around kind of forecasting particularly around revenue forecasting um and then also through and this kind of couples with the second point here resource planning we have a forward view of kind of staff utilization so if you're managing a big kind of hour based workforce uh a workforce that's billing by the hour you can kind of see how how much capacity people have, um, where there's bench time, who's over-resourced, um, all of that kind of capacity planning utilization sort of side of the equation. Um, and we also have some very strong functionality around doing your gross margin reporting, um, and that's kind of projected current and historic, um, as, as well as sort of how you're burning down on your budget. Um, second point there, sort of resource planning I've touched on. Um, expense management. So both our platforms do sort of what you would consider company paid expenses. Uh, Project Works does have kind of a personal expense module on there as well. Um, one of our other sort of key features is that we do support multi-entity. So I think the largest workflow max migration we've done to date has actually merged eight different um, discrete workflow max instances together so a large organization that was running eight so you can get in there and kind of do all the kind of permissioning down if you need to sort of segregate um, access to like a single entity um, within your one project works um, kind of instance um, we have a leave calendar that's really because knowing when people are on leave is really important when you're doing resource planning um, we have an integration with uh, 12D Synergy. So if there's anybody in the kind of architecture engineering space, you may work with them. Uh, they've actually built an integration with us. So when you create your project and set that up in Project Works, it'll automatically kind of create the mirrored project in 12D. Um, and then these last couple of points are really more around your broader ecosystem. So we're making um, a large investment in sort of integrating with HubSpot. So we have multiple ways that that can work. Um, and also if you're using sort of Jira and DevOps for your task management, I think the work guru guys have more task management functionality built, built into their platform, whereas we've gone more kind of integration route. Um, so if you're using Jira um, specifically, we've put a lot of time into that. Um, and while we don't have a mobile app, uh, we have a heavily mobile mobile optimized site. So you can kind of do your time and expenses um, through your mobile device still. 
Thank you very much, Matt, for sharing that. And let's uh, flip over and uh, give Tony the floor. Work guru, points of difference. Yeah, thank you. Um, like Matt said, we, we focus a little bit more on the task management internally. Uh, so whether that's, you know, project elements, phases, tasks, you know, sections of projects to work on or scheduling those things, we handle a lot of that internally. Um, and then the probably mobile and workshop apps. So we, we have both a, a phone app, which is a one-to-one, -one, you know, I use my phone to clock in in the field or yeah, wherever I'm at. Uh, but the kiosk app, the workshop app is a big one for us, particularly for the fabrication clients and people who are, for example, on mine sites and they're not allowed phones, but you might have 10 people have or 20 people coming to clock in and out on a single tablet. So that's a really big thing for a lot of our clients. Uh, I'd say probably 60% of our fabrication clients at least use the the kiosk apps uh, to allow that um, you know, many to one device clock in so you don't have people, their heads in their phones on their workshop floor as well, which is a bit of a safety risk. Um, advanced purchasing. So like Matt said, we both deal with company related expenses. We've got a very extensive purchasing module that deals with everything from foreign currency conversions to landed costs to off purchase order landed costs to splitting purchase orders between projects to some for stock, some not for stock to the whole bit. So purchasing in WorkGuru is an enormous part of what we do. Um, a lot of that comes from the fact that my co-founder is one of the world's biggest inventory nerds. So shout out to Michael Davis. Um, and another one that we deal with, which is uh, comes out of our experience there, is the is project groups. Um, so project groups is a really very random thing, but we came up with a way of grouping projects together in an arbitrary thing to be able to report on groups of related projects. So for construction, it's really useful for dealing with uh, projects with variations. So you can have a primary project and then you know variation projects around that, and you can report on the the group of projects as a whole, uh, but the individual projects and see where you're making money or not making money. Uh, that's primarily used in construction, but we also do have it uh, in both service and uh, manufacturing capabilities where people might be building multiple trailers for one particular client and they want to track each of those as an individual build, and then, but then group them together as a project. Uh, we've got some pretty advanced functionality around price tiers, both supplier price tiers and client price tiers, and this is both on tasks and products. So you can specify client group pricing for products and tasks. Uh, and you can also override that on product level and go down to customer specific pricing. So if you've got, it's always the miners, I don't know why it's always the big miners, but if you've got client contract pricing that you're not allowed to change uh, and if it might be specific, then your, your client contract price overrides the price tier, overrides the default price. So we've got enormous pricing flexibility there. Uh, we, t we touched on the advanced custom fields before, slightly different. So, so one of the big things for us in custom fields is that we allow custom fields pretty much everywhere, but also we've recently released functionality to allow a different custom field group. So if you've got two different types of projects, so particularly for our clients who do fabrication and install, uh, so particularly if steel work on, on construction jobs, you might have a, a group of project custom fields that relate specifically to the fabrication of elements and then a specific group of custom fields that you know relate to the install. So you can actually toggle between projects what set of custom fields you're going to use. Uh, stock control. So one of the big reasons that we built WorkGuru to start off with was that people couldn't you know, track uh, products that they had in stock as well as using their timesheets. So it is an optional module for those of you who are construction or you know, consulting engineers, not in the same, not wanting the same functionality that uh, Project Works has. You don't need to have the stock control optional. Um, but you certainly have it. Uh, and then internal production. So if you're building things that go onto the shelf or being used for, for other projects, uh, we've got a fully fledged uh, internal production module as well that, uh, that handles internal manufacturing. Thank you so much, Tony and Matt, for sharing um, both of the points of differences there. And I'm sure for people listening in, it's understanding those key features to, to help you in that selection process. Let's move to section three, the migration and developing a migration strategy. Can I ask you, Heidi, to take a, take this away? Yeah, sure. So I'll um, talk through these points. So time frame. Um, there is a um, spectrum of approaches, I guess, when it comes to the migration strategy in general. So from my experience, I've seen um, plenty of businesses who are ready to embrace change. Maybe they've recognised that within their current platform, um, the features, the functionality, what they need for where their business has evolved to is no longer a fit and have seen this as an opportunity to make proactive change. And then on the other end of the spectrum, um, there are others who just want to keep business as usual, um, want to keep continuity, no disruption. They don't want to change an interface. They just want to 
wake up and it be the same on the 27th of June. Um, so both are kind of valid, but it's all about we have to have a strategy that um, that gets us to the 27th of June, happy, healthy, and with a business that's intact. So as far as time frame goes, my advice is sooner rather than later. Um, I've had businesses that we've migrated last year. They're all in the new a new product, functioning, happy, merry, oblivious to anything that needs to be done now. Um, so sooner rather than later is is best. Um, for those who are moving to the Blue Rock product, it has been a little bit tricky to do things as soon as they might like because there's a few features and functionality that are still being rolled out. But um, at least getting a migration strategy together as soon as possible is my absolute advice here. Um, in terms of data, um, as we've said, all Workflow Max data disappears on the 26th of June. Uh, no one's sorting that for you. Um, there is no backup that will get delivered. It's 100% on you to sort that. So while um, having a backup is super important, um, but if it comes to moving to a platform, the migration of that data depends a little bit on the platform. Um, Project Works largely takes care of um, data migration and um, there's a lot of conversations that go on around how that is then um, presented and um, filtered to look how we want it to in Project Works. And then WorkGuru has a migration tool that brings across um, all the heavy lifting of the data with a few areas to be repopulated and tweaked to make everything align exactly how we need. So um, your time frame, your data depends on the software. Um, change management. So this is a massive um, area that can either cause a massive win or a massive disruption to the business. So there's always going to be change management required for these kind of things. Um, and I like to try and frame it up as improvement opportunities. So um, ways that we can manage the change management really well is front loading the testing and the training. So teams feel in control, they feel confident, they feel um, not in the dark with a new system um, being put in place. Um, having a systems champion in-house for a client makes a massive difference in terms of ownership and the success of um, this change. And then also just being realistic that um, there will be bumps, there will be challenges. It's very outside of the norm for everything to go perfectly, but everything is figure outable with the right support and approach. So that's what I'd say to change management. And the last one on business process, you know, mapping out current business processes and translating it to the new platform is important. Um, I think it's Tony who, who coined the phrase, it's like rewiring your brain. <laughs> and so like most of the time, the things that we run into that are a bit tricky is because we're trying to do something the old way in a new platform. And that that doesn't lead to good places. So um, having those business processes mapped out and what they'd look like in the new system is super important. Um, and my experience is this changeover is um, just helping businesses nudge closer and closer to a gold standard of process, to reassessing, to um, having the guardrails of different softwares that kind of force them to be better. Um, it might be a bit uncomfortable in the interim, but in the end, it best serves the staff and it best serves the business um, and is a real opportunity if we can get those business processes translated beautifully to set them up for much better data, much better business efficiency, and much better operations. So yeah, that's what I'd, that's my two cents on that. that Thank area. you so much. Thank you so much, Heidi. After the 26th of June, do I have read-only access to my data sitting in Workflow Max by Zero? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Matthew, is there anything you'd like to add to that? No, I think Heidi's done a brilliant job in, in sort of uh, prefacing the, the four talking points. Uh, I, I do think that business process, just, just, to, just to add perhaps, just the business process piece, uh, very useful to map as soon as possible as well uh, to sort of uh, investigate as you're sort of exploring the solutions uh, presented presented today and, and and what the options might be for your business as well uh it's gonna gonna help you map map that to 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 what your your business needs uh to the software thank you matthew and we have come to the exciting part work guru case studies heidi can we start with you to talk about um this case study with the av project management company Yes, so this has been um, a great project. So um, this is a New Zealand-based company that um, delivers audiovisual equipment, but then also installs it. So there's not just it's not just a labour thing. It's not just an inventory thing. It's 
it's a beautiful combination. So the difficulties that they um, had in um, the current Workflow Max platform is that there was no tracked inventory and they had multiple locations through the country. So that was tracked in spreadsheets. Um, a huge amount of serialized products that essentially were stored as notes data within the platform. Um, they also um, kind of had had a very flexible approach to the use of the cost screen, which was great for a lot of things, but it meant that in terms of data integrity, being able to have an audit trail on the job and kind of having a few guardrails that processes had to sit between, um, left, a, a, you know, left them a bit open there. Um, and and then just um, the ability to schedule and report on, on a bunch of things to do with install um, and the breadth of reporting there. So there was a number of difficulties that they were making do with and obviously, um, you know, a large company. So changing is not something you take lightly. Um, and so it had kind of made do for a number of years. So um, this was solved by WorkGuru. Um, and just speaking to the transition process there, um, the data migration was perhaps a little bit more involved than your average transition. Um, a very high number of SKUs, um, over 300 open projects, um, a huge amount of both ad hoc and purchase order costs on products, very SKU based um, projects and some really funky ways of interpreting um, the data in Workflow Max. So the data migration, yeah, like I said, was a little bit more um, involved, uh, interesting. I don't know what we're doing. Difficult. Was it, was, it was tricky. <laughs> it was a tricky one, Heidi. You're allowed to be um, honest. So that but in saying that, um, we were able to uh, land the plane, right? So um, that was that was great to be able to do that. Um, change management, um, that's been a huge part of the transition process, rewiring um, a, a decent sized team's brain to understand the new platform and workflows and some of the flexibility that existed now doesn't exist, but for the betterment of, of the business and the integrity of the data. Um, having those processes with more guardrails um, will ultimately lead them to be a better business, but is a learning experience for the team in the meantime. So that's a little bit about the tr transition. Um, ultimately, the outcome for this um, this business will be you know, a lot clearer project health, um, able to be reviewed and reconciled at um, top level and in detail in several places throughout the software, um, better lead management, um, better scheduling of their field staff, um, a source of truth for forecast versus actuals at all time, um, clear visibility over not just the quantity, the serial number and the location of um, their stock on hand, but also how many of each unit um, throughout the business, which is massive because they're often moving things on and off projects. Um, reportable serial numbers so that there's an audit trail for how these serial numbers actually move from a purchase to a project to potentially back in stock to wherever else they might um, actually transition in real life that can be reflected in the software. Um, loads less manual processing in a lot of areas, um, a lot less copy pasting, ticking, unticking, uh, yeah, a lot less there. And then um, the reporting for the management team is just going to be a lot more clear and transparent because the data is actually true to life. Um, so I think it's going to be great. We're still, um, you know, we're still getting the team really humming in it, um, but already um, it's there's some massive chunks of data processing that just won't exist on staff members' plates, and so they're already reaping the benefit of that. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Heidi. If we can pass across to you, Matthew, custom yeah. signage company. Can you let us know about that case study? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it was actually a client that I uh, originally brought onto a Workflow Max uh, way back when. And so they, they had years and years of data and they were using it uh, to its fullest extent in terms of tracking of costs, running purchase orders, uh, issuing quotes for everything. Uh, they probably needed a little bit more uh, assistance with their lead management side of things. And so we've addressed that in the in the transition to, to WorkGuru. Um, they because the transition was fairly, you know, point and click uh, with with WorkGuru, they really uh, tapped into us to extend the functionality that they needed. So uh, inventory items, uh, supplier side pricing, uh, the uh, kiosk capabilities, as well as well as the the mobile app. And so it's just getting familiar with the terminology and and, and the navigation and and customization of that. Uh, but they but they had the the disciplines in place to to capture the quoting um, with with very intricate detail as you can imagine with lots of these custom sign custom 
uh, fabrication type businesses, you know, um, they can, you know, they'll sell anything. Uh, they can get away with so so you have to be very very flexible with uh, how you cost things and and how it sort of maps to to the likes of zero and they really uh, because a lot of their staff are actually hourly based uh, uh, wage uh, employees uh, the the payroll integration piece was also quite critical for them to to manage their their large and growing workforce as well so uh, you know they've been on uh, live uh, earlier this year, uh, so they've actually decided to sort of uh, make make the jump or make the move sooner rather than later, and it's given them that comfort to to actually transition with some lead time and and um, be able to sort of manage that process uh, and and mitigate that change. Uh, yeah, quite quite successfully there as well. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heidi and Matthew. Now, what's great about working with Heidi and Matthew as your um, um, support in the cloud integration and the transition is they work with multiple solutions. So let's pass over and, and, and hear from you talking about project work case studies, which I'm very excited to hear about. Heidi, if we can start with you again. Yeah, this is a really cool story um, of a development consultancy and surveying company who have multiple offices um, nationwide and each office is a separate entity, separate legal entity. So um, that meant they did have five Workflow Max files. They have to have five zero files, obviously, um, to do all their compliance. Um, but their team, um, you know, a team from one location might be working on a project on another location and, and vice versa. And so what that meant is um, sometimes a staff member would be set up in the workflow max file that they needed to work on. Sometimes there'd be an intercompany recharge to account for the cost and the on charge of that time. Um, as you can imagine, um, you know, week in, week out, crossovers of projects and people between entities, um, <laughs> it, it gets um, pretty complex and, you um, you know, confusing quite soon. Um, and so not only did they have um, kind of spreadsheets and, and methods to manage this, and not only were they a bit inconsistent across different offices and how they managed that, um, you know, there was a lot of backflips involved when it came to invoicing, um, a lot of backflips involved when it comes to revenue forecasting and then planning out um, resourcing and capacity and then getting the data back on like some KPIs around utilization and revenue per person. Um, it's, it's a lot when you've got, a lot of people and projects and companies um, all housed in different houses essentially. So Project Works um, has been a great um, fit for them and the transition process um, again a bit around the data migration Project Works um, as Matt said they've um, they can consolidate um, multiple databases into the one project works file. Now that doesn't mean that it's one entity in there now there's ways and means of slicing and dicing what company um, is, is which, um, but what that means is um, the data from the Workflow Max files has been brought into Project Works. Yes, there's going to be a cleanup process to ensure that the data is represented intentionally. For example, you might have the same person in a couple Workflow Max files, but you don't want that person to three three people <laughs> in your Project Works file. So there's a, there's a few things there that um, the Project Works team just gets it really nice and concise and represented in a way that um, I guess the client give some indication there um you know for as far as change management goes in this case um the transition for timesheet users will be quite minimal it'll be a different interface to work in with um however if they're working on a project in a different office um they don't have to sign in and out of different files um so there will be new features that we they will be using inside of project works um that they've been typically using outside so um, spreadsheets for revenue forecasting spreadsheets for capacity planning and um, the transition for that will be you know often is best to take a staged approach in terms of introducing those processes in um, but for them it's a really exciting opportunity to reset on how the business processes are done um, as well as defining who's responsible and on what cadence um, because being able to have that all in the one project works um, is just such a game changer for them. So um, yeah, the outcome for them will be that visibility over resourcing, not just um, location at a single location, but across all related entities, um, as well as managing the revenue forecast across those multiple entities, all being able to done be done within the one platform. Um, so that will allow them to essentially solve the problems of the future now by having that really clear visibility, um, you know, 
across those multiple entities, um, as well as having those metrics around staff utilization, some of the processes that had to be manual for your intercompany recharges, you know, that's going to be a lot more streamlined, uh, not having to duplicate timesheet between different logins, and then at the end of the day, still being having that beautiful connect between five entities under the one house and project works, but then they're still being pushed through really neatly to the five legal entities in zero. So um, huge consolidation, I guess, um, into a much, much more efficient uh, solution for them. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heidi. Now, Matthew, could you talk about your PR agency and drafting client that are uh, now using project works? Yes, uh, there are actually a couple of different examples, two different extremes. The uh, PR agency, when we first met them, they were uh, largely operating through spreadsheets. And so uh, a couple of key things that we had to, to really focus on, they were already using something like HubSpot as their, their acting CRM. So that natural integration that uh, uh, ProjectWorks provided was was uh, uh, crucial to, to transitioning. Um, they were they were spending countless hours reconciling uh, numerous meetings to to keep the the spreadsheets up to date. They're they're actually multi location, not multi uh, well, multi office, and so they were always doing a lot of uh, back and forth to to validate um, their projects and and uh, budgets. Uh, since implementing uh, Project Works, they've been able to uh, forecast uh, resource plan a little bit more efficient or more efficiently using the the, the quoting. Uh, through the projects, um, they're able to forecast. You know, obviously with a large workforce, they're needing to to track their and manage their cash flow um, quite closely uh, as a as a PR agency. Um, they also really uh, embrace the sort of leave application process um, native to to, to Project Works. Uh, again, large workforce, lots of moving parts, people uh, in and out of the office. Um, so they've already found some gains gains there, and and so they they're actually uh, have just recently gone live. So they'll be going through their their next uh, billing cycle, uh, but full full knowing that you know what their expected sort of cash flow or or invoicing will be, uh, because they've uh, they're investing the time to to build that out. Uh, with the drafting client in particular, they were a, a smaller business, um, uh, partly offshore and partly onshore, so they distributed work workforce as well. Their key, their key requirements were uh, having strong uh, um, timesheet capability. They had very uh, high-end clientele, and so they were making sure they accounted for all their time. They had some very particular uh, set of requirements around how they wanted to quote, you know, per per draft, um, different varying prices uh, required and attached to that. So complex pricing uh, attached to attached to that sort of draft process uh one of the most more complex businesses i've had to uh, uh load into a, a software solution uh but project works was able to sort of help help with that transition again they were largely operating in spreadsheets and spending a lot of time reconciling and so again this is uh this this upgrade to the the operating system within the business just meant that they could uh charge accurately uh, and uh, invoice uh, uh, on time. Uh, again, large clientele usually dictate the the payment terms, so they they really needed to be sure that they could they could charge um, in a timely fashion versus spreadsheets where you know it's prone to error. So they've been live uh, for several months now, and uh, uh, they extended their capabilities through uh, the BI reporting. Uh, Power BI reporting um, functionality as well to to um, slice and dice their data in uh, a far more flexible manner to to their needs. So um, some yeah, some case studies where integrations really uh, made the difference to to their businesses using Project Work. Thank you, thank you so much, Matthew. Um, what is really um, um, exciting is that when we're working with expert cloud integrators um, and expert teams. They want the best for you. They want to match the client with the best solution. So um, let's talk to this slide, assessing the solution. If I can um, hand across to you, Heidi. Sure. So we've um, got these three, three things here. What questions to ask? What are our desired outcomes and post skylight? go live improvements and I think that's a really neat way to kind of segment it out. Um, so I 
you know, every business is a little bit different in terms of the um, whether they need board level sign off to make a change versus um, a roundtable discussion to make sure that the key team members are happy. Um, so asking, um, you know, I think what what do I need and what's working, what's not, where are we, um, where are we processing information in our business outside of our current platform? Um, those are all really good questions to ask. And then if you find it's quite a massive um, list or perhaps you do need that board level sign off, I find running things through a Moscow status, which is a must have, should have, could have, won't have, is a really good way to frame up, I guess, the ranking and the importance and the priority of some of those things. Um, you know, that, that you do need in the business. Um, the desired outcomes, I think for me, um, that all comes back to like, what problems do I need solved? Um, within there, you're gonna have like, you know, your more, um, your hard metrics, you know, we need X, Y, Z functionality that will solve this problem. And some of it will be a bit softer. We need our team to, um, to not be lost and confused. <laughs> we need to have a bit of a plan to, to bridge that gap. Um, and then post go live improvements. Um, again, I think having that conversation before you um, launch into something on how are we going to stage these additional features? Are we going to go lock, stock and barrel day one, we're using them all? Or does it make a lot more sense, which in most cases it does, is to start off replicating like for like and then in a kind of logical, systematic way, introduce the new functionality so that again you're kind of building that bridge for your team to work walk over in a way that you know everything stays um held together nicely um in the changeover so that's my take i'm sure matthew's got some things to add there too yeah for sure i, I guess with what questions to ask i like to sort of uh frame it up in from two two different perspectives uh namely uh when, when i'm speaking with a, a new client uh, it's always at a management level, what they're wanting to achieve with a with a software transition, I always like to involve um, you know the, the the wider workforce in, into that discussion as well because they're going to have a point of view that which is valuable. Uh, quite often, I, I find some business owners fairly handcuffed to the systems that they have in the business because they they can't manage the change and and they they they're worried that it will you know rock the boat and 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 so forth and and so that involving the the um, the workforce in into the decision making process actually helps uh, build build stronger um, connections to, to software. Uh, in terms of uh, outcomes that are desired, pre predominantly the, the business owners are always looking for more real time reporting uh, and, and greater visibility. And the the, the workforce are looking at um, you know usability, uh, you know st straightest path to to, to outcome. Um, and, uh, and so in, in like for like type, type capability and functionality. So, um, there's some considerations just to, to think about around who your audience is and trying to get that level of buy-in. Um, and then with post go live, uh, usually with the transition, uh, what we like to do is, uh, pull back as much access, uh, as, um, to, to almost to a minimum level of access, so that they're not having to make too many or be, be asked to do too much too soon and then progressively load with additional capabilities as as requested. Um, that's, we find that to be a nice way, especially where there's a lot of complexity. Um, segregation of duties can, can actually be uh, far more better managed in, in um, comprehensive systems with uh, better, better security controls as well. That's not the only approach, but certainly with some larger especially larger workforces like the 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 icon uh the pr agency that uh, i was i was talking about earlier is that um you know uh large workforce um let's let's stem the the, the flow of change that, that that's being introduced and simply um activate as as necessary thank you so much matthew and let's move on to um, um, sort of the final segment, which is talking about preparation. Oh, oh, and I went too fast. I went too fast. Finally got the clicker working and I went too fast. So getting everything ready. Heidi, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, I have a few thoughts and some of them are reiterating things that have um, already been said. But in terms of exporting data, even if you're moving to Workflow Max by Blue Rock, I can't stress enough um, to export your data. <laughs> Take a backup of these specific ports, reports or information that's really important that you know you're going to need to reference, build those reports, export them out, make sure you have someone check the backups, make sure they're stored securely, 
multiple copies potentially, um, but make sure that your data is not left in the current workflow max, um, that current workflow max product, whether you're moving to a new solution or um, moving to the Blue Rock solution, um, export the data. Um, with mapping key business processes, one key thing that I'd say here is, um, you know, don't make assumptions that how, and this is tricky because we don't know what we don't know, right? But don't make assumptions that the way that things work now are always going to be the way things work in another piece of software. Um, like again, like if you're moving to Project Works or WorkGuru or the Blue Rock product, um, laying out your processes, but then also testing them in the new software as early and as frequently as possible. Um, the more that that kind of can be weeded out um, prior to making the change, it just feels better for everyone because we can problem solve. You're always going to be problem solving along the process, but the earlier, the better. Um, I think there's going to be some resources sent out after this, but I have a seven step process um, for implementation success resource that again um, helps you kind of walk, walk through the stages that are going to be needed to make a changeover to make sure that at each stage you've allowed um, the time, the people, um, you know, the right things to be done so that hopefully you can have a smooth um, and successful landing and then move early. Um, I kind of feel like we're already past the moving early <laughs> stage, to be honest, um, but earlier the better. Um, if you're moving um, to a product outside of um, Blue Rock, then I would encourage you to start that process ASAP. Um, it need not be a stressful process, um, but I think the more time you have on your side, the better. We can often underestimate um, how much time is needed for ironing out um, bits and pieces. Um, so the best chance of being smooth and calm is the earlier the better, yeah. Thank you so much, Heidi. Matthew, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, just a couple of points. Um, just with the exporting of, of data, uh, I totally agree. Uh, have uh, backups and, and several of them if you can. Um, one, one small consideration for some businesses who have used uh, the likes of Workflow Max to, to store files, uh, consider using leveraging Box or Dropbox or Google Drive integration just as a, a means to connect and propagate all your files off of Workflow Max that support those documents. That's a really uh, handy tip for those businesses who've, who've got lots of uh, file history. Uh, then you can obviously um, park that somewhere and then um, turn off the, uh, the storage man management service. Uh, by exporting the data as well, you might even consider using some of the custom report capability to organize it in a way uh, that you're more familiar with versus the backups, which are almost a series of tables. Uh, uh, so the data can is is a very interdispersed if you've if you haven't already attempted the backup. So I'd actually perform a, a reporting backup, a series of exports, as well as a, a convenience backup provided by by Workflow Max. Um, in terms of key business processes, the data actually, when you export the data, can actually inform what's working really well inside the business and, and where some data capture points aren't being managed very well. It could be an opportunity to revisit how and what data points you actually want to maintain going forward by way of custom fields and, and, and standard field, field mapping as well. And um, I guess with the, the, the moving, moving early point, uh, as Heidi said, you know, uh, uh, we're probably beyond the point where it's it's uh, at the early stages, but uh, I'd suggest uh, and highly encourage um, that you you think about trials for for WorkGuru and Project Works to evaluate uh, the system's capabilities, so that you have uh, a better idea of uh, what what the new new options are could look could look like in the future for you. Thank you. Thank you so much there, Matthew. So now we're moving to the Q&A session, um, section of this session. I do encourage you to pop any questions um, in, in the Q&A box, but I would like to sort of open it up to our panellists. Are there any common questions that you're receiving that we haven't answered yet today, do you think? Not so much a common question that we're getting, but I'd like to sort of tag on uh, one of Heidi's points earlier on the common questions that you should ask um, as part of your discovery. And Heidi mentioned this when we were chatting about this yesterday, that one of the questions she asks is, what are your spreadsheets? Uh, I know I think there's two questions that I used to ask when I was consulting. And it was, what are your spreadsheets is question number one. Uh, and then what do you double enter? Because basically those two things tell you 
what information is not readily available or, or useful inside the system that you've currently got. And so you're reverting to spreadsheets outside of it. And what do you double enter tells us where your process needs improvement because you really shouldn't be double entering anything. So that's probably one of the two key, the two key questions that I think you should be all asking our clients to go, all right, you know, do we need something new? And if we need something new, uh, whether it's work guru or project works, whatever it is, um, where, where, what are the gaps we're trying to fill? And those two questions will will tell you probably ninety percent of the gaps in your client's process and data management. Fantastic, thank you, thank you for that, Tony. And we do have a question from the um, audience: Are there checklists of what should be, we should be exporting from Workflow Max one point zero? Yeah, I don't know yeah. if there's an official checklist for project works anyway. I in the admin section of Workflow Max, you can just go and do a full export. So if you've at least done that, then you should have your full data set um, somewhere on hand, regardless of which platform you do choose to go to in the future of, of a different one. So I, I would just do that. It's quite an easy, um, it's a single button you go in and then I think they send you an email maybe to a download link and then you've at least got all bases covered. Um, Cool. Uh, from a work area point of view, yes, there is. Um, there's a there's a set of reports that we recommend that you run. Um, you can do the full backup, but the set of reports that we recommend that you run is it's on our help docs. And if you search work guru to workflow Ma workflow max to work guru migration, um, there's a set of reports there to run. And fundamentally, the reason that we wrote those guides is because then that it makes it super easy to import that stuff into work guru, and it brings everything from your projects, your purchases, your timesheets, your your costs on jobs, client staff, all of those kind of things. Uh, as part of that checklist, Tony. So um, yes, we, we definitely have that. And there's a recommended set of steps that we think you should follow. And in the follow-up email, we'll put a link to that and we'll put a link to Heidi's um, seven steps as well. So if we don't have any other questions and there's nothing else to come from the panelists, um, I would like to ask, what's one thing that you want our listeners to take away from this session and how can people get in contact with you? So if we can start with Heidi again. Cool. So um, I'm a big believer in the phrase, life happens for me, not to me. And I think for a lot of our business community using Workflow Max, yes, this change is something that's been forced upon um, upon us, but choosing to see it as something that can happen for us to make our businesses better, seeing it as an opportunity to improve would be um, the major thing that I would be saying, you don't need to be fearful of the change, but you do need to, you and your clients do need to take action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heidi. It took me a while to figure out that saying, but I guess it's a glass <laughs> half full saying. That's, that's, that's what we're going with. That's the summary, yeah. <laughs> Matthew Peng, can I go to you then? Yeah, for sure. I have to echo uh, what Heidi just said uh, as, as well. I think that this is really an opportunity to relook uh, at your business and, and, and figure out what, what could be improved as well as what's working really well for your business. Um, so that's what I try to instill with all of my clients uh, as I sort of advise and, and, and looking through their, their data and, and their solution and options uh you know they should be asking and and expecting as much as they possibly can from the software so asking the, those questions up of the vendors uh, as you're evaluating the systems is is also going to be crucial if you don't have uh, a project expert at hand thank you thank you and to matt hater yeah thanks heather i think the the takeaway um that i'd like for everybody is if you're in the consulting space it's worth taking uh, look at least at Project Works. Um, we've got a great Workflow Max rescue package to help waive the well, that waives the cost of onboarding. Um, even if you're currently planning to move across to Blue Rock, it's worth taking a look at your, your other options out there. Um, if I can have one bonus one too, sorry Heather, I would I would reiterate uh, go into Workflow Max and and do that full data download. Um, even if you are planning to go across to uh, Workflow Max by Blue Rock, and your data migrates across to there. As soon as the original Workflow Max turns off, there is currently no way for you to export it and go to a different system. Workflow Max by Blue Rock do not have an export function. So once you're in there, there's no way. So get it just to have in your back pocket. Thank um, you. Thank you very much, um, Matthew. There. Now, before I pop to you, Tony, I have had another question. Woohoo! Do you know if there are any business grants available to help clients with the cost of the transition? 
Um, I'll, I'll take that one. Yes, there are definitely some. Don't waste the time trying to figure that stuff out between now and June 26. Uh, it, just <laughs> mean, it just means you just can't start your project until the government gets around to, get, to approving it. <laughs> so yes, Lee, there, there definitely is. Um, like there's some of the, the small business transformation stuff in Queensland uh, in particular is what I know of. Um, but uh, yeah, I would not be waiting to get, because most of those you actually have to wait for government approval before you start the project or sign a quote, a contract to do it. So yes, but don't wait. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tony. And now what's one thing you want our listeners to take away from the session, Tony? Um, other than that, everyone has to do something um, and that there are some awesome options out there, whether it's us or whether it's Project Works. Work with professionals. Um, honestly, working with partners will make your life easier. They they have experience running through things like your change management process, like adapting your business process. It, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your current system is. When you change systems, things will change. Your business process will have to change to map to the new system. That will cause a change management requirement. And even migrating the data, there will be stuff that needs to be looked at and go, well, do we do this way or do it that way? The, of the thousand apps in the Zero ecosystem, it's more than that now. I can't name two that describe a product in exactly the same way. So any data migration leads to change, which leads to process change and business management change. So really leverage people like Heidi and, and Matt Peng and, and use their experience to make this a good experience for yourselves and your clients. It's uh, I, I strongly recommend using a good partner. Yeah, great, absolutely. Great advice. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, with that, um, I, we don't have any other questions. So with that, I'd like to thank our guest panellists, Heidi Seal, Matthew Peng, Matt Hayter, Tony Harcourt, and everyone at Project Works and Work Guru who assisted in the development and production of this webinar. Thank you for attending today's webinar presented by Project Works and Work Guru. Today's topic was There's Life Beyond Workflow Max by Zero. I'm Heather Smith, and I've been your host for today's session. Thanks all. Thanks, thanks Heather. all. Thank you, Heather. That's great. Yeah, thanks, Heather. Very, much. Very good.